Well, it is a great and sunny day here in Florida. ICT coming in as a Floridian this morning. <laughs> so you're going to hear all the ambiance of uh, the outside. So it's been a, it's been a, a minute or so since we talked last. I just want to let you know that I am doing well. Thank you for asking. Thank you for your concern. Everything is well. I hope everything's well for you. So obviously, I gave you last week what I'd like to see us move away from, that daily consolidation. We have had no real luck doing that. We're staying inside of that uh, rather frustrating little consolidation and price range. So we have nothing, nothing by the way of high probability. So I took it upon myself after two days of trying to get a read on it and said, you know what, I'm just going to disconnect and jump out there in the RV and take the kids down to South Carolina. And then I got down to South Carolina and figured, you know what, Florida sounds pretty good right now. So I just... Got myself down here, and it's beautiful, really pretty. I got ate up by mutant mosquitoes, <laughs> but apart from that, it's been wonderful. So I want to talk to you a little bit about, and this will be a brief one today because I have plans this morning with my kids. So that will usually when I say that, we go for a long, long, long time. Uh, that's not going to be the case today. We are without the wife, and it's a men's retreat for me and my son so two of them so we'll probably go for about 25 minutes 30 minutes or so and i'll turn you back to what you were doing hopefully you haven't been churning your account too much and causing more harm because the markets are actually very fickle right now i took a quick peek this morning saw that we had traded down into an old new week opening gap nothing really stands out in terms of High probability for me. And as I want to remind you, when we are looking at the markets in the way I'm teaching you as my student, and or if you're a casual viewer, if you're you now just listening for the first time, I try to teach a concept that I dubbed smart money. And that means trading when it's smart to do so. Not, well, I got time to be in front of the charts. You know, I have time to be here, and therefore the market should submit to my will and or my system. And sometimes, as we have seen, it simply doesn't want to do that. Now, what makes this market right now low probability? Well, I'll give you a couple things. I, I tweeted this morning rather early asking what the criteria was, list the criteria that would constitute a high probability trade setup. Number one, number one, you have to have some measure of understanding where that weekly candle is going to expand to. And I don't have that. I haven't had it for, well, going over two weeks now. And I've admitted it. And I've been up front and told you, you know, I don't have a real good read on what it wants to do in the context of high probability. Now, can I get in there and take two handles here, two handles there, three handles here, two handles there? Yes. But it's nerve-wracking for me, and it would be very difficult for you to follow that, and it would be really just a waste of time. I want to teach, as I've been teaching, if we're going to look for a setup, it needs to have some kind of higher time frame draw on liquidity. Where, why do I believe you, as the analyst, where do you believe the market's going to draw to on a higher time frame? And if we can't ascertain that, with a one-sidedness where it's so hard to argue the other side of the marketplace, then we don't have high probability. So why would you want to go in? Why would I sit out on Twitter? Why would I go on live stream when I admittedly said that I don't have a good read on it right now? So what do I teach and preach? If the market's not giving you something, go do something else. Now, as a young man in twenties, this would drive me nuts and I'd be in there trying to hammer and try to do more and do more and do more, and I would hurt myself, much like some of you probably have done. I read one of the tweets from, uh, I believe his, his name on Twitter is ICT student. He tweeted to me saying he lost $40,000. Uh, you know, 
listen, you have to stop. You have to know when to stop. And I've given rules to know when there's high probability and when there's low probability. And again, I've stated this. I've been away because of that very reason. So pushing the envelope, trying to do more when it's not likely to do so, whether you're in a funded account or not, just it doesn't make any sense. So $40,000 is something that obviously hurts. It pinches, I know. But look at it this way. You bought a car you shouldn't have. Now you're stuck with the payments. There you go. That's, how, that's, that's the way I looked at it. That might not fit for you. It might not be equivalent, but that's how I looked at it. When I hurt myself and blew account and blew account and blew account, that was very hard for me because I didn't come from money. So you have to do, number one, the rule in this is preserve capital. And you have to have an understanding of when you're likely to hurt yourself by forcing something that isn't there. You know, forcing something in the charts, like Rorschach, it's that ink blot phenomenon. You know, put an ink blot in front of two people, they're going to see not the same thing. They're going to see something totally different. And when the markets are in low probability conditions, and this is the part where you write these things down, folks. When low probability conditions exist, everybody's system is going to talk. Everybody's harmonic. Everybody's. Elliot Wave, somebody in GAN is going to have some excuse as to why it's going to go up, supply and demand, ICT order blocks, it's going to be breakers, it's going to be this. It's, it's, they're all going to have something that they want to see in price because that's the perfect excuse for them to, to push the button because they have no patience to wait for the market to come out of this low probability condition, which I've outlined for you. I told you this is what I want to see. It needs to come out of that range. And if I'm not mistaken, I believe I put it on Twitter. I think it was a short little video on Twitter. If it isn't, I know it's on my YouTube channel. One, one, or, one or the other. It was something I talked about audibly. And I showed the chart and said, this is, you know, this is what we're looking for. It needs to come out of that range until it does. We're in a very small intraday scalping scenario. So it's a scalper's market, but it's such a small little range. If we're forced to do a scalp, going back to that criteria that would makes a trade high probability, number one, I don't have, maybe you have had, but I don't have a clear indication of where that weekly candle is going to expand up to or down to because it could do either one. And because it can do either one, I have to wait. I'm not out here trying to show you I'm a jack of all trades in every single market condition every single day. I'm teaching you how to follow a model. I'm teaching you also how to look for high probability. And when it indicates to me that the market's simply not trying to do what I would require of it, for the model I'm teaching you and the models that I teach my other students, I have to sit still. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's not weakness. That's an advantage because there are people out there that I'm quite certain one of my students admitted it on Twitter to me. And you can see it. it he tweeted right directly to me. Said he lost $40,000 this month. And I'm not trying to make light of it or make fun of it, but that's, that's the reality of this. If you don't know what you're doing and you can't control yourself, become impulsive and you push Try pushing a boulder up a mountain. That's the equivalent of what you're trying to do right now. Take a step back. You might be seeing people out there getting lucky. I promise you folks, if they continue to do this kind of stuff, the market will shred them. Anybody can get lucky. And I, I got lucky for months when I first started. And then the inevitable came. So don't look at, well, I might get lucky during this because I, I don't, have the time, the benefit of time, because the sands of time in my hourglass are ticking down because I have to do a funded account challenge. I have to get to funded status. I have to do this. I have to do that. But those grains of sand, you ever watch an hourglass empty out? When it first starts, it's like, man, this thing's going to take forever. And then as it gets halfway down, you're like, oh, well, you know, I got to go back and wait that same amount of time for the remaining half of sand to drain down to the bottom of the hourglass. It seems like it goes forever. And then you get down to that last tiny little one-fifth or one-eighth of the volume of sand. And it seems to go real, real fast. Kind of like old age. When you're young, you feel like you got a lot of time. But you want to rush, 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 rush. Me, at 50 years old, getting ready to turn 51, I look at it now as I don't have a lot more time on the other end. And I want to go real, real, real slow.
I want things to slow down. That's what you want to do in your trading. I didn't see that as a young man. I wanted fast and furious, turbocharged, always, you know, full full steam ahead. And it couldn't get there fast enough for me. Now, because I've hurt myself over the years, I've learned that lesson painfully. And one of my students has just now paid $40,000 for that lesson. You don't need to do that to learn it. Sitting still is a skill set because capital preservation is the number one rule in speculation. Because if you can't follow that rule, it doesn't matter how good your system is. It doesn't matter how good your mentor is. It doesn't matter how many competitions you won, how many trophies you got, how many people like your posts, how many people follow you on YouTube. It does not matter. All of that will not help you if you cannot control and keep your money. You have to have that rule set. And by me teaching and preaching and doing it, when I have nothing to act on, I have to sit still. In truest form, paid students of mine would fade my analysis and then complain how it didn't work for them. My analysis would work. Theirs didn't. They're saying the concepts don't work. That's a personality flaw. Pushing in this environment. Pyramiding. In this environment. Stupid. Stupid, stupid, stupid. Don't do that. You're not in a low resistance liquidity run condition. You're not in a market that wants to get somewhere real quick. Think about this for a, for a second, folks. All of these things that are going on around the world. We have war. Several wars on the horizon. We have m multiple bank collapses and, and closures. And more on the horizon. Central bank digital currencies are looming. All of the you got good credit. You want to buy a house? Congratulations! And you have to pay more for someone that doesn't have it. Does that make sense to you? Like we are in the upside down right now, and you're all trying to put blinders on, ignoring that everything is getting tore up with chaos. So the markets are sitting still. They're not. They're not in a climate where big money is in there trying to do anything. Because if they were, it would be moving around. It will not stay like this long. Now, two weeks may be a lifetime for some of you. I understand. I was there too when I was a young man. I was thinking to myself, man, this you know, this is going to go on for years. No, it doesn't. The market. I think it was Paul Tudor Jones and uh, Reminiscence of a Stock Operator. Um, something to the effect that the markets can stay irrational longer than you can stay solvent. And if I butchered that, I apologize, but it's pretty much close to what I believe that book referred to. Meaning that the market can behave in a manner that does not allow you to profit or participate with an opportunity that would result in a gainful outcome. It can do things irrationally. Stay in a range that just simply doesn't permit you to do what you want to do on a typical basis of trading a certain model, looking for this thing to happen, looking for that to happen. It can do that longer than you can endure it and stay solvent, meaning keeping your account. You blow your accounts faster than the market can leave that state of irrational behavior. And that's all we're in right now. Now, there's going to be people out there saying, but look at this, ICT, look at this. I did this, I did that. You're supposed to be the world-class leader in trading, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Listen, man, I looked like a superstar when I first started. And I had no skill. It was all luck. Luck, luck, luck. People get lucky all the time. They win the lottery. But you keep pushing this in environment, trying to demand things from it that it's not likely to deliver to you. It's going to bite you. And then when it does, impulses are going to come and you're going to trade when nobody's looking and you're going to blow your funded accounts and you might get those free resets, but you still know you did damage. Try to avoid that. Don't push so hard. Nothing, nothing says you had to trade the last two weeks. Who says that? You did. But you don't understand. I see. I understand more than you realize. These markets aren't going anywhere.
Price is this stagnant right now. Look at the daily chart. You have wicks and tails, both end up and down in that range. I saw a tweet, but I thought, uh, you know, 100 handles or so is enough. Well, if you're looking at a range that is likely to leave and go somewhere, that's plenty of range. But there's nothing indicating to me, and I don't know what it's doing right now as I'm talking to you. So I don't know what price is at, is at, at this moment. It could be behaving in a manner that, you know, is doing something wonderful right now. I don't know. I'm staring at water. So you don't have high probability right now. And if you made money, I'm going to be honest and tell you my opinion. That was coincidence. It's coincidence because nothing in the market right now is behaving in a manner that constitutes high probability. Back to that list, the criteria that lists, or you should be listing, having had a list from all the teachings and lectures I've given. You got to know where the weekly chart's going to expand because if you don't have that higher time frame sponsorship behind the move, because large flows and delivery in price is going to be seen in an expansion on that weekly chart, it's going to be reaching for some measure of value, either fair value or to reprice to an inefficiency. One or the other. So, hang on, there's a guy going by here with a golf cart. Morning, bro. <laughs> you look too happy. Oh, now he's going to come in here and talk to me. Hold on. <laughs> Okay, so I'm in the way. I thought he's gonna come in and say, "Hey, how you doing?" I'm like, "I'm broadcasting. How are you?" <laughs> the the joys of doing things live. But uh, the list and, and criteria for high probability is we demand we must have an understanding of where that weekly chart's going to expand. And if you don't have that, let him get out of here. Hold on. If you don't have that, you are immediately are you're in a low probability condition. Now, can you, can you take trades in low probability? Yes. Are you more prone to be incorrect and lose? Yes. When you win, you won't look at it that way. You'll look at it as, well, I have skill. I outperformed my model. That was the excuse I gave myself when I was coming up. Well, you know, I'm better than that model. And I've had models humble me that I've created where I tried to outperform them, and I've learned my lesson with that. So rules are there for a reason. You, know, you don't cross the center line when you're driving. If you do that, you're likely to do what? What my son did. Cause an accident. And it was the first rule I told him before I bought his car. I said, do not cross that center line ever. Don't ever do it. If you do that, 80% of the accidents won't happen. Don't speed. Don't drive impaired. He doesn't drink. And don't cross that center line. And you're pretty much you know, in the hands of the Lord or the performance of the other people driving around you. And you can't control those things. So... Right away, without weekly expansion or an understanding where it's going to reach for, you are without high probability. Now, assuming that you could, we don't have that. I don't have that right now at present for ES. I don't know where it wants to draw. So I have submitted myself to the rules. I said, okay, well, I can't do anything. Because I can sit out here and tell you what I think it might do based on parts of the model. But those parts are not in alignment with what the model calls for. So I can't sit down with you with a can of green paint and a brand new paintbrush and a brand new canvas and try to paint something in the shade of red or blue or yellow. I don't have the tools to do that. So the model is incomplete. The ingredients for it, the recipe that would call for blue ribbon results, it is, I don't have all the ingredients. So it would be foolish for me to sit out here and try to call something that I know is unlikely. I've done enough. I did two days of where I expected certain things. And as soon as it didn't do it, I knew right away, experience taught, I have to stop. Not because I'm afraid, not because I don't know how to do it, because the market's not giving me what my model is looking for or what I would look for with my model. How is that hard to understand? And why would you view that as a weakness? Because it's not. I know when not to do something. Do you? Do the people that you listen to know when to stop? If they're new, they don't. They're discovering that. And unfortunately, they may be learning that through painful lessons that they may not be sharing with you. They may be doing it in the quiet, in the privacy of their own trading, where you don't see them.
showing you their results. You don't see them live streaming. You don't see them showing you what they did before their live stream started or after and later on. Whatever results they had when they first started live stream may have evaporated. We've seen many instances of that this year. So you have to have preserve capital at all costs is rule number one. That weekly expansion, you have to know where is that weekly candle. The one that you're in right now for this trading week or before the week begins, you have to have an expectation, a reasonable expectation. You can't just, this, well, I, I got a gut feeling it's going to go here, it's going to go. No, it has to make perfect sense technically by the way I teach institutional oral flow and where it's likely to go to. Where has it been? What stops has it just recently taken? Who is in control right now in profit? How can they be harmed? Those are the questions you need to ask yourself when you're looking at price. Because we don't have that weekly expansion where it can draw to a very specific level on a weekly chart on that weekly candle, then we are immediately in low probability. So now that means we're in a scalper's market because also I mentioned that daily range. It needs to leave that. Not just poke its head above it. It's got to leave it. Then sentiment will shift. And that's all I care. I don't, I don't have my heart set on the ES going higher or going lower. I don't care. But I will submit to you that we are going into a seasonal tendency for May going into the middle of June, where it, not all the time, most time, it drops and goes lower into that mid-June time period. So I'm kind of like tipping my hand to you. I, I believe it's likely to go lower. If we're going to only factor in seasonal tendencies. So if I'm going to forecast for you and, and share my opinion going forward for the next couple months, uh, I believe that ES will be lower if it follows its seasonal tendency. Something can happen, obviously, you know, that can upset that entire thing. And what we've seen in the last three years, you know, they're saying UFOs and aliens exist. <laughs> so anything can happen, folks. Anything can happen. You know, it's Looney Tune land and you have to be careful. You have to be very, very careful. And I think that's what's being measured in what price is doing right now. Like there's so many things that are going on, not just in America, but in other countries. And risk is elevated very, very high. And big money, deep pockets are not in a hurry to assume new risk right now. And that's just investing 101. I mean, you have to have some measure of institutional sponsorship for the market to want to move, not because it's the buying and selling pressure, but there has to be some measure of sentiment to allow for this dance okay, between liquidity providers and large order flow. That has to be there. And right now, there's a vacuum. That's why you're seeing price behave like it does. Short little runs. Which takes us to that list again. For high probability, what did I teach you when we were doing the live sessions? What what constitutes a high probability five handle run? And I think that's the low hanging fruit objective. Can you use what I taught in that model to get two handles and three handles and be done? Yes. But the chances of you as a new student or a new trader being well disciplined. To just stop when you get there, have a limit order to get that two and a half, three handles and stop. And there's nothing inherently wrong with that. So, I mean, you hear me talk about five handles minimum. Five, that to me is a, a goal that you should strive for. You won't hit it right away. You'll grow into it and you'll outgrow it over time. But it, to me, I think that's a reasonable target for someone that doesn't know how to trade, that's never been consistent, that you... That you start aiming for that, and if you do that, that's fine. You know, you'll 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 outgrow it eventually, but you can make a career entirely off of that. There's nothing wrong with just doing five handles. There's nothing wrong with you if you can only get uh, three handles out of the five you're aiming for all the time. If you're simply, I'm going to move a little bit further down where I have my RV parked at. They have their landscaping crew in here. They're going around with their little weed whackers and they're approaching me so you can hear them so we'll drop a little bit deeper in so when i taught you on the live sessions and i've also taught it in lectures and 
the Twitter spaces all over the last few months. High probability five handle runs need to have what? It needs to have a range that offers how many pips? Oh, I'm sorry, not how many pips? How many um, handles? This is, a, this is a way to test yourself. If you're following along on Twitter, how many handles does the range have to potentially deliver for you to get a high probability five handle run? 10 handles. So if the price run that you're looking at, anticipating, you want to offer, you want to see if it can offer you f uh, 10 handle total movement. Not that you're trying to get the full 10. You, you can, over time, grow into that. But I taught that it needs to have a range to offer at least 10 handles. Now, with that in mind, let's think about this for a second, folks. We have had what? This dude. <laughs> I knew he was going to come here and talk to me. <laughs> I got to roll these windows up. Start to look like I'm a little bit more antisocial. So we have low probability because the weekly chart doesn't have a clear draw where it can go higher or lower for a specific level. So right away that we're in low probability. And we are in a trading range on that daily chart where we have seen wicks and tails both up and down. So we have a balanced price range. Think about it like this. For those that are in relationships, okay, say you're married or you're in a long-term relationship. When there's no arguing and no fighting, no chaos, it's boring, right? That's exactly what you want in your relationship. You, you don't want chaos. You don't want fights. You don't want arguments. You don't want anything like that. You want everything's balanced. And that's what you're seeing in price action right now. In ES, in NASDAQ, we are in a point of balance. There has not been anything introduced that caused an imbalance. Look at that! Look at the range I showed you on the daily chart for ES. That shady little area. I, I tweeted it this morning again. Inside that range, we've seen expansion up and down, back and forth, back and forth. Now imagine that range was an empty space, and you had a crayon, and you were five and six years old again, and you were instructed to color that in. That box that I shaded is essentially been colored in, both up and down entirely. So it's balanced. Price has traveled up and down in that range both ways, multiple times, multiple days. So where is it going to go next? I am submitting to you, and I've said this last week, I don't have a clear indication where it wants to go. So immediately, that checks the first box. I am not in high probability conditions. So I'm not live streaming. I'm not going to sit on Twitter and call levels that I know that are likely to not pan out. I'm not going to feed the trolls. They're having a heyday with the two days I said, you know, I don't know what I'm doing, and this is what it is. Let's just go out here and, and spend time together. I don't need to spend every single day to prove the point that I've already taught, that if it's low probability, it, we're at 50-50. And I don't, I don't want to operate in 50-50. You shouldn't want to operate in 50-50. Now, also, no weekly draw. It immediately checks the box. We're in low probability. We're in a trading range. So it's in a balanced price range. We don't, we don't know where it's going to go. Now, you're also in a scalper's market. So right now, you have three things in that list for the criteria for high probability. Every single one of these are checking the box that you should not touch it. It's a rattlesnake. It's shaking its tail at you. The desert guide, ICT, told you last week, we're in low probability. I don't know what I'm looking for. Um, and we'll see what we see on Wednesday. And did I come back on Wednesday? <laughs> it was happy trails, man. See you later. Hammer down. I'm going down the road. I wasn't chit-chatting with you. Every time I stopped, <laughs> I talked to a couple of my uh, private students. And no, I'm not going to come see. I don't know, a lot of you are saying, hey, you're in Florida. Come by. No, 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 no. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm not prepared for that. It's not that kind of trick. But now look at the price runs. How many of the price runs that you are trying to partake in, how many of them had the potential to pay out 10 handles? Uh-oh. Now the list grows even larger against you. So right away, it should make perfect sense 
this tapestry that I've laid out here beforehand, this is a do not touch market. But ICT, I saw this guy on YouTube and I saw this guy on Twitter and I'm inside this guy's Discord and he's doing this and he's doing that. And that's wonderful. Well done. If you want to learn from them, go right ahead. I'm not stopping you. I'm not holding anybody hostage here. But if I'm going to teach you and I'm teaching you a model with rules, what what type of mentor and what type of sense would it make for me to do things outside the model and the rules I'm teaching you? It makes no it makes no sense. What what growth would come from learning rules that I myself wouldn't even apply? If the market's telling you this, this, and that, well, how's that fit with the model? Does the model say we're in high probability conditions? Hammer down. Get in here and start looking for setups. No. It's checking every box not to touch it. Don't touch it. And there will be setups. There will be setups that pan out that I won't be a part of. For me to sit down and educate you and have the charts live and say what I think is going to happen, I have to have everything in alignment. Otherwise, I'm going to look like anybody else out there that has no idea what they're doing because the market's going to perform how the market's going to perform. I have no advantage when those things are occurring. So I have to excel when I know everything is in my favor. It needs to be one-sided. That doesn't mean a trending market. The market needs to be poised to move in a specific location from the weekly chart where I can see that clearly. Okay, I have my bias. I'm going to operate just in that. And I'm teaching you how to do that. And that way you can go into the marketplace and study price action with that mindset. But some of you, and if I'm going to be fair and honest, I think it's the majority of the new students. You don't have the benefit of patience. You don't. I didn't have it when I first started. Don't don't think that uh, you know I have this patience of a uh, you know a saint. I don't. I'm very impatient. But in this, I have to be. I have to be, and you're going to have to be as well, or you'll lose your money. You'll be frustrated and or quit. And if you can't develop patience, it's probably better for you to quit. You'll save yourself a lot of pain and anxiety and anguish. Trying to do something you're not equipped to do from a personality stance. There's going to be people in this audience that meet that and you'll never be able to trade. Not because it's my stuff or anyone else's stuff. There are people out there that are not equipped to do this. They, just, they can't handle it. They don't like rules. They don't want to be disciplined. They don't have any responsibility. They want to blame everybody else for when they don't do something right. They push a button. They want something to happen. Well, it's somebody else's fault. That's why it happened. No. Listen to what I've been teaching you here. The market is going to perform in a manner that's less likely for you to see what it's going to do beforehand. So I'm submitting to that. I am not arm wrestling it. If it's indicating to me that it could go either direction, it's 50-50, why are you trading? Why are you trying to get funded accounts right now? Why are you trying to build your funded account right now? When the probabilities are so low and easily come back and stop you out, frustrate you. And if you're new, and that's who I'm talking to, folks. If you're new, you don't have the skill set to observe when you're about to go into a tailspin because someone that's seasoned, someone's been around for a while, they've had losses and they've, they've had drawdown and they came back from drawdown. Drawdown's not the end of a career. You're going to have drawdown. That's always going to be a factor in your trading. Losses are going to come. 100% strike rates do not exist. But for a new student, for a new trader, when you experience that and you have already shown a lack of discipline and no control, the responsibility that you should have to say, I'm going to stop. I'm not going to throw good money after bad. You won't see it like that. Your infancy as a trader and no experience will make you feel impulsive. You'll be angry at the market. You'll personify the market. You'll make it a an entity in the, of itself that you have to do war with. When in fact you're warring with yourself and you're going to go and do things impulsively trying to get something 
to pay you back what you lost. And that is the loser cycle that everybody will experience. If they do this long enough, you will encounter that. Regardless of who taught you, what you learned, what you used to trade with, whatever discipline, everybody has that. And I went through it dozens of times as a 20-year-old thinking that I was going to get a different result. And the only result was I did it faster in a more stunning fashion blowing the account. And that's the same thing that will happen to you if you don't learn how to be responsible. You have to be responsible. You have to have rules. You have to say, okay, I can't go here now. I have to stop. I have to do something else. And that's what I did. I literally, because I'm obsessively compulsive. I think you know that about me now. <laughs> and given the opportunity to be on social media, see things that's going to drive me nuts where I, I have to I have to chase cars, folks. I'm, 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 I'm like a dog. I, I, I literally can't help myself. So I had to completely take myself away from it. And I told myself I would do one Twitter space while I was out here, and this is it. I won't talk again until I get home next week. So long and short, <clears throat> we don't have high probability. If you're watching, you know, Rockstar Roger over there on YouTube and he's doing something or she's doing something and it's making money, that's awesome. That is awesome. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm just telling you from what I'm teaching you and the model and the rules I'm providing, there's a context that goes along with this. The smart money concepts that have to have smart money rules that you have to follow. We're not doing casino time. Okay. People go to casinos and people sometimes win. People buy scratch offs. People buy lottery tickets and sometimes they win. Are you confident? Are you confident in this market climate right now, in the conditions that you're seeing in this market right now? Are you confident in your experience and the, the time that you've been doing it? Are you going to be able to control yourself? Are you going to be lucky? Are you going to leave yourself to the fate? of luck because if you're willing to do that you have not learned anything with the time you've been with me because luck is not a factor in what we're doing i saw a student of mine sent me a message said uh did they break the algorithm or did we break the algorithm there's too many people out there that knows how to do it now and now it's changed and they've changed everything there's a different kind of price action when you're when you're feeling that what you're feeling is inexperience because the market will sometimes go in these periods where it just ranges and consolidates there's nothing abnormal about this it tends to happen okay it happens and i made a refer referral to how it it kind of felt like um like you would see in typical july you know the way price action behaves in july july is a month where it can be it can be on or off but generally, you know, the latter portions of July going into August, there's this time, not in recent years, because we have all kinds of upheaval and turmoil and things going on, which cause a lot of people to, to be fearful of their money. And that caused shifts in, in sentiment, in which there was much more movement in the summer months, which is commonly referred to, and I didn't create this term, but it's always referred to as the summer doldrums, where the market just, eh, just isn't in a hurry going anywhere. And that's kind of like what this feels like to me. It feels like the behavior that a classic mid-summer price action would look like. And you have to be very careful not to push real hard when it's trading like this, whenever it forms. But you have to have the eye and the, the observance of when it's there to just backpedal and say, okay, I'm not, I'm not going to push real hard. Because market environments are going to shift in and out from high probability to low probability and to Periods where I've openly stated that if it's not giving me the indications of what I would look for in terms of price signatures algorithmically, then I have to submit myself to I don't know right now. And that's not weakness. That's not them changing the algorithm. That's not them, oh, we got to single handedly you know, change everything because this guy on Twitter that teaches with a demo account, we have to do things differently now. Think about what you're saying. <laughs> It's just because you haven't been doing it long enough. And now because you've witnessed us as a community and me guiding you through high probability conditions. Now, because we have this elongated period of time where there is low probability. It feels like things have broke. 
there's there's something amiss something's wrong ict you 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 let the cat out of the bag and now they changed everything and now we're all doomed <laughs> how's that for a b-rated movie right that's a that's a b-rated uh, plot that's not happening it's not going to happen all you're seeing is a market that is in a range bound consolidation because there's nothing that has caused an imbalance yet it will happen i promise you it will happen but until it does, you have to just sit there and relax. Do something else. Study. Look at old data and backtest. This is a wonderful time to be studying and not risking something. Because if you're gambling right now, and that's what you are, if you're, if you're trading with real money or a funded account right now, you're gambling. You're gambling. Don't do that. The market's not behaving in a manner where it's so easy to go in and just walk up to the money tree and pluck it off. We're not seeing that right now. The tree is fruitless at this moment. Give it a chance to bloom and blossom. There's harvest times. There's a time to plant. There's a time to sow. and There's a time to reap. And right now, you just got to wait. Wait. There's nothing wrong with that. There's no reason for you to be in a hundred mile an hour hurry to go out there and blow your funded account or blow your account or go into severe drawdown. There's no reason for that. We're not in an environment where the market's moving fast and loose. And that is when the market is high probability. Everything will work like it's supposed to. Everything will be easy to see. But right now, even for the guy that's running the show, I'm telling you, I can't touch it. I can't touch it right now. But ICT, you said that you know the algorithm. Yes, that's why I'm sitting still because it's not going to do anything right now. What's so hard to understand about that? There are signatures that I look for in price action. If price is not showing me those signatures, it's indicating that I should not touch it. It will chop and bang around and run up and down, up and down, taking liquidity in the nearest short-term basis. And then frustrate you. They won't have these sustained runs. They won't run for specific price levels that I teach. They'll have deeper retracements, sharper retracements, all the while not doing very much in terms of price runs. So it's not it's not something to be wrestling with. Just submit to it. Just, just allow it to be part of your learning curve. And it's Something I explained to you last week, you know, it, it's in a market where, you know, until we leave this range, we're in a very, very small intraday scalpers market. And when that is in existence, you're forced, you're forced to either trade that way or lose money. Think about any position traders that have tried to position themselves or swing traders in this model or not this model, but this price action. I'm sure they've been chopped up. Lots of examples of hoping this runs here, hoping it runs there, and then, boop, stopped out. There's some pretty heavy-handed uh, folks in our trading community that have had difficulty right now, publicly. It's hard right now. There's no shame in saying that. It doesn't mean that the market has changed. It hasn't done something different. It's not evolving into doing something else. I had a follower on Twitter tweet to me, say, hey, look, can you come back to this conversation? And he took me to the YouTube, the last live stream, where I lost my train of thought. And what I was going to say is, if the question that I could tell you is the most repeated question to me as an educator, as a mentor... Will this ever stop? Will these concepts ever stop? And I got distracted and I wasn't able to come back to that. But I tweeted a response to that person. And I'm going to say it here too in case people missed it or they missed it. The, the question I get the most in terms of email, trading view, um, comments left in my YouTube channel, uh, comments sent to me you know, on Twitter. I don't do DM, so if anybody's pretending to be me, I don't ever direct message anybody. But uh, the question, without a doubt, that repeats more times than anything else is, aren't you concerned, ICT, by teaching this many people that they're going to change the algorithm? And 
the answer to that is unequivocally no. Absolutely not. Because I can be honest and tell you that if I believed that, my flesh would have, even though I made all kinds of promises, the humanity in me, the person that is a sinner, I would have kept it. I would have kept it for myself. And that's, and I hope you can appreciate the, the honesty in that. I don't absolutely believe it will ever change because the mechanics behind what goes on would have to be something outside of what is the only way it can happen. Large order flow, deep pockets. That's what's the dance between liquidity providers and where the market wants to go. And these markets will allow deep pocket order flow to exist for a period of time. And then that that tide or that, that trend, if you want to call it that, that momentum, will shift. And they'll move against it. And that upsets present sentiment. And then and engages new liquidity constantly. So that ebb and flow in the delivery of price that these price engines deliver... It inspires new order flow by the big funds, the large funds, people with more money than you have. Your little contract trades in here and then collectively as a, as a retail trader, we're doing very little in terms of the scope and magnitude of the volume that enters these markets. So these price engines are not there to inspire your trade, but by default it does. It's meant to inspire the new position or the collapsing of existing positions in large positions, whales. Think of it like that, okay? So because that's always going to be a factor, because money is an interest to everyone. There's nothing wrong with that. It's the love of money that's the root of all evil. But using money and having money and acquiring more of it, that's not evil. That's not sin. But if we are paying attention to how these markets work, there's always going to be a seek for yield. Some measure of income, an interest-bearing you know, instrument, there's going to be a, a constant seeking of profit that's never going to go away. Before the markets were there, there was people buying and selling things all the time. So what you're saying is greed is going it, to it no longer exist. Because that's exactly what you're saying if you're saying that by me teaching this and showing you how the markets really book, you're saying that I'm going to single-handedly remove greed. <laughs> that's not going ha to happen, folks. Money is always going to be sought after. And when there's lots of it to be made, big, deep pockets are going to be trying to go after it. But right now, that's why I'm asking. This is why I, I get folks that are like they're adamant against me talking about anything outside of a chart. But all these things I talk about are going to be factors. And I'm going to say this in five minutes and close it. You have to understand that the things I refer to, and even some of the tinfoil hat stuff, it may not be an interesting thing to you because you may not be in, in the United States. But the things I'm talking about are not limited to the United States. We're all going to be affected by it. We're all going to be affected by it. We're all going to be placed on some central bank digital currency for a short period of time. And it's going to have an impact on all of our lives. If we have money, you're going to be controlled on how you spend it. They're, think about what they're doing. Everything they're doing right now is changing the way money is used. And they're redefining money. That was the whole purpose of allowing crypto to become what it is. And it's going to be gone. You're all going to be forced on a central bank digital currency. And universal basic income is the outcome that they're aiming for. And people that are rich, multimillionaires like me and other people that have made a way for themselves either through entrepreneurship or trading or inheritance or whatever it is they, they have their money. We might not be in the coming years because of all the changes that are coming. And that, you know, it might unsettle you. I'm at peace with it. I don't care. Because money doesn't give me happiness. I've, I've been poor. <laughs> and listen, 
poor and not having a lot of money, you can still live. You can enjoy life. But money only allows you to afford things that most people can't. And when you have a lot of money, you have a whole lot more worries. More people want to take it from you. More people are going to look down at you because you have it. You think that the money that you're trying to, you're trying to make with this is going to make you a rock star. And people are going to look up to you and like, wow, look at you, man. I want to be like you. No. In reality, they look at you like you know, you're know you not going to be looked at like you want. Let's put it that way. And certain weak individuals are going to come around you and you know, try to befriend you because they want what you have. And when they realize that they can't get it, then they'll show their true colors. So it's hard to see real friendship. It's hard to know real relationships when you have money. You don't know a person's real intent. And you always have to second guess it. And when you don't have a lot of money, your friends are more friend. You can trust your relationships because they love and trust you. And a lot of you young guys out there are in a rush to get this you know, millionaire status. And you're young and you're going to make the same mistakes that I did. You're going to lay down with somebody that, you know, probably isn't the best person for you. And I didn't see it coming and I got whacked. So all these things that I te teach you and, and talk about, they're going to impact you one way or the other. It's going to happen. Maybe not to every degree, but the things that I talk about are going to impact trading. Oh, it's not going to happen here. ICT. Watch it happen. Watch. Prepare for it. If it doesn't happen, you had insurance. You were prepared for it. But going into this in endeavor in, in terms of investing and trading and turning a blind eye to everything I'm talking about and I've been talking about for years. Right now, everybody wants to talk about the things that I've been talking about since 2016. Before anything happened, I was talking about all these things. This is what's likely to happen. And uh, it was called Chicken Little. Mocked on social media. Look at the world we're living in right now. Does it feel normal to you? Mm -mm, not to me. And it's going to be changing. You want to talk about the things that are changing? Money. How we use money. Commerce. All of that is changing. Trading will be impacted by that. They're not taking trading away yet, but I think that it could be used because think about how many people have gone the way of leaving the nine to five mentality. Now, there's a lot of people that fail trying to trade. I'm doing a very bad job of condensing this in the last five minutes, right? <laughs> I'll wait for my son to peek his head out. The idea is this. By preparing for scenarios that allow for the highest probability for you to profit and understanding where the snares are, where's the pitfalls, where's the things that you're going to likely do harm to yourself and uh, avoid that. Don't even walk in that area. Don't even venture into that jungle. And right now, the way the markets are behaving, it's literally like taking a, bl a bloodbath and walking into the jungle waiting to be devoured by the first thing that gets its claws into you. And then wondering as you're being eaten alive, why did this happen? Who's, who's responsible for this? Who can I blame for this? Someone owes me restitution. <laughs> no, you made a very poor choice. You were ill-equipped and you went into a dangerous condition and situation assuming that you would survive it and have no harm done to yourself. That's the equivalent mentally. That's what you're doing right now by trying to trade in this environment. How hard is that to understand? Now, for those of you that are quiet, didn't say anything to me and you've hurt yourself, lost money, went into drawdown, lost your funded account, failed your funded account challenge. You know, every box that I talked, you know, toggled as we went through this discussion you knew that was the truth and yet you still pushed the button who's responsible for that I wasn't even around here I've been away and some of you if you're being honest if someone asked you you'd, you'd be blaming me 
Hey, the ICT, I watched that video. He said to do this. And said, what? What did I say right now? What did I say right now? I'm taking a step back. I'm not touching it. I need to see what's going to happen. Nothing. Now, yesterday I got lucky. Saw a little bit less than uh, 10 handles of a move. But that was on the heels of me trying to do something long. And I got pinched for a quarter of a point and reversed and got just short of 10 handles. After that, no idea what it wanted to do. No idea. So, I don't look at that as skill. I didn't call that, look how awesome I am, high five, boom, like you see me do when we're in high probability conditions. I do that not to show off. It, sounds, it seems like showing off, but I'm doing it to the viewership that are trying to learn. I'm anchoring that moment. I'm creating that little kind of, uh, that, that kind of uh, excitement, that, uh, that happy dopamine drop. Because it becomes much more meaningful to you instead of just watching, oh, well, you know, there's price action that you didn't take a trade on. You can't profit from it. You can't spend the money on it. So it makes you feel closer to the event that we were watching collectively as a community. Well, you know, the short yesterday that I was in front of you know my older students, there was no cheerleading in that. It was just okay. There it is, and I turned them loose to it. And I said, "Okay, have fun with, with with this stuff. I'm not interested in it." But when we're in high probability conditions and low resistance liquidity runs, that means that the market's really easy, like butter, just slides right on into where you want it to go. It's easy to see it happening. It's easy to see what it wants to do. It's easy to see the entry points. Everything is easier there. Then you'll hear the adjectives come out. The boom. Who do you love? The Joker, um, Jeff, you know, throwing the money around and stuff. That's just to make you feel good about that observation that we watched happen. But right now, if I was right, if I was to sit out here and call it right, I would tell you again, this is not something to be viewed as skill because it's just coincidence that it happened to deliver because it's outside the model's rules. How hard is that to understand? In this environment, we're seeing people that don't really know what they're doing, getting lucky, and then claiming it's skill. And some of you fall victim to believing that stuff. I did too as a 20-year-old. I thought everybody that was showing me results was being honest. They were, they, were, they were able to do that. And I am absolutely 100% being transparent with you. If I see it coming, I'll tell you. If I don't see it, I'm going to tell you. I can't see it right now. And that's not an algorithm being changed. It's not me being the catalyst for the entire monetary system being restructured and you know, done all over again. It just means that we're in a consolidation, folks. That's all it means. That's all it means. And they, it will not last forever. But you have to submit to it and you have to wait for whatever catalyst is going to be used to move us outside that range and get us moving around again. Just got to wait for it. You cannot impose your will. The sands of time right now, they're going to drop the same speed. They're always dropping the same speed. But your perspective of it, when it's a lot of sand in the upper portion of the hourglass, Things feel like they're moving real, real slow, but that same grain of sand is still dropping at the same capacity and, and speed. It's always doing the same thing. But your perception is when you lose more of that sand, you feel rushed. And you're doing that with your challenges for your funded account, trying to rush to the state of you being able to make money. I got to get funded and I can start taking money out. I got to trade one more day. I got to do five days of trading. I got to do this. All these things are time. They're there for you to blow it. That's why those rules are there. They're not there for you to succeed. So you have to turn everything upside down and look at it for what it is. They are speed bumps. They're barriers. They're in place so that way that funded account doesn't have to be paying you anything. And for the folks that are trading with real money, same thing happens with you. You're thinking... It's been a while since I've had a winning trade. I need something. 
I need to be encouraged. Well, you should be encouraged by the fact that you're not rushing into doing anything right now and gambling. That's the mindset you should have. That is the, I see my son now. I head back to the RV. It's right down the street from me, so I got to pull up. That's the mindset you need to have. You reward yourself for not doing impulsive things, and that's the reward in and of itself. But it doesn't have any profit behind ICT. It doesn't have a losing trade either. I told you I don't like to wear a safety belt. It's like trading without a stop loss ICT. You need to wear your stop, uh, seat belt. <laughs> shut up, shut up. So there's rules to this game. There's rules of engagement that you're going to have to submit to. And if you don't, you will pay the price. And if you don't have these rules written out and follow them, you will not measure your growth. Not psychologically. Not monetarily. You'll have no measure of knowing what it is that you should be expecting in terms of progress. How much have you grown in the last two weeks? Some of you want to quit. Some of you are regretting ever starting because you think it's impossible. I'm just trying to tell you to take a step back. Go back to that daily chart and what I mentioned last week. It needs to leave that. I promise you, when it is out of that range and we're now moving freely again, all this stuff will be easier to see in price action again. You'll think to yourself, man, I was sweating it back then. And it's only been two weeks. You're trying to take your entire career, your entire career as a trader, you're trying to encapsulate that in terms of two weeks. The success or failure of your entire lifetime as a trader going forward hinges on the outcome of these two five-day periods. It's silly when you think about it like that, isn't it? It's all perspective. And I did that to myself many, many times as a young man. And it skewed my perspective. It skewed my understanding of where I was in my growth. And you don't want to do that because it stunts your growth. You'll trick yourself into thinking... There's an emergency when there isn't. You'll trick yourself into thinking there's an opportunity when there isn't. And you have to be very comfortable in your own skin knowing that it's okay for you not to do anything. If other people are doing something and they're making money, be, be happy for them. Be glad that they didn't get hurt right now. Because it's too easy to do it to, the, to yourself or themselves. And if they want to pretend it's skilled, let them. What, what are you going to do? You're not going to change their mind about it. And arguing with them is just, it's, it's toxic. Let them be themselves. I'm just telling you from personal experience, having mentored hundreds of thousands of people and having been in this industry for three decades, experiencing it myself, pushing in this environment eventually will do its work. You will have your wings clipped. And the reminder in this Twitter space is you have to submit to those sands of time and where you are in that. It's always happening at the same speed, at the same rate of descent from the upper portion of the hourglass to the lower. It's never really speeding up. But how much time you have left in the upper portion is going to have an impact. And don't look at your trading like you have to rush to get to somewhere. You're not, you're not in the right state of mind when you do that. You're going to impulsively do things. And as soon as you allow impulse, emotion, psychological wrestling matches because you're trying to keep up with someone else's performance, trying to live up to someone's expectation, like signal providers. I mean, I, I facetiously said to my older students um, last week, I said, and I'm glad I'm not running a signal service in this environment. Can you imagine? Can you imagine if I had a schedule that I had to maintain to be in front of everybody on a live session? I had to be out there and doing it. The, the stress that it would place on me it would totally have a major impact on me psychologically. And also, if I did something incorrectly because I'm obsessively compulsive, it would eat at me even when I was away from the charts and away from the people that would be listening to me. So what did I do? I completely removed myself from the enticement to do so. 
because I am like a dog that chases cars. So I had to do what? Manage myself. I have a mental illness that if I don't do these types of things, I will be impulsive. So I've learned to view it as an advantage and knowing that I can control this part of me doing these types of things. Some of you may not need to have it this extreme where you physically remove yourself from it. And others may think, well, you know, I'm going to go that route. And that's the only way I'm going to be able to protect myself from doing harm to myself. There's nothing wrong with that. That's discipline. Believe me, it takes a lot of discipline to do it. You might think, well, it sounds like it's real easy and it sounds like fun. You're driving around in an RV and going all over the country and you're vacationing and spending too much for food that don't taste all that good. Listen, you do what you got to do. If it means taking your, your computers and telling your spouse that, hey, look, here's the power cord. You know, hold on to this until you know, next Friday or next Friday after that or whatever and commit to them. Say, you know what? I'm going to invest more time into you instead of doing this because I have to physically remove myself from the impulsiveness that's likely to occur if I look at the price action right now because everything in my system that I haven't grown in trusting yet, everything in my model tells me I shouldn't do it, but I don't have the experience to listen to it yet. I might do something to myself by pushing a button that I shouldn't be pushing. I'm going to engage a marketplace that I know by all rules and face value, I should not touch it. But I might see something that will lure me into, oh, it's going to really run now. And if I don't take this, I'm going to be regretful. How about if you weren't there looking at it when you know it's not likely to be there anyway, you can't feel that impulsiveness. You, I've never drank alcohol, okay? But I liken it to, and this is why I, I liked the beginning of, I promise this is the last remark because I don't want my son to dick, uh, tip his head out the, the RV again looking at me and get frustrated. But the beginning of Alexander Elder's book, Trading for a Living, in my opinion, that is so much better than Mark Douglas's Trading in Zone. And that's not a knock against Mr. Douglas. That book is okay. But in my mind, in my opinion, about psychology and the real effects of doing things, why we do things impulsively, um, Alexander Elder nailed it because I grew up in an environment where majority of my family members were alcoholics. They were many times functioning alcoholics. That means they could keep a job and they were able to work being an alcoholic. But as soon as the the, the time for going off duty happened, they're on their way to the bar getting liquor or stopping at the liquor store and bringing it home and drinking all night long. Weekdays. And on the weekend, forget about it. They were wet. And they would be fighting, carrying on, acting a fool. That was the environment I grew up in. So I told myself I was never going to do that. But that book in where he talks about alcoholism and the effects of you know dealing with that struggle of overcoming it that, that addiction that resonated with me because that's where the rubber meets the road that's a grassroots real issue that many times many times i wish educators that i liked reading about we would go into that and nobody ever did it but alexander elder so whenever I'm asked, like, what's the best psychological book out there? It's the first part. I, you know, the triple screen stuff, you know, that's okay. You know, but that's useless to you if you can't control yourself and the impulsiveness. And everybody has an addiction. Everybody, everyone has an addiction. Every single one of us as a human being, we're addicted to something. For some of you, it might be the fact that what I'm producing, my content, you may be addicted to that because you're pursuing something and you like what you're learning here and you like the community and whatever. Given enough time and not behaving in a manner that you're being taught to do and breaking the rules, you'll learn to hate this community. You'll hate me because you're going to look for something outward, outside of yourself to blame instead of assuming the responsibility that's required because the rules I'm giving you, they're there for you to learn properly. And not need me. 
But so many of you want to do like the alcoholism does to an alcoholic. You know, I, you know, I can't drink while I'm on duty, but man, I'm counting, I'm counting down the time, looking at the clock. It's almost, it's almost quitting time. It's happy hour. And you can't wait to get another drink. Is your trading like that? Are you thirsty constantly for a new setup? Because you're addicted if you are. And chances are, if you feel that way, you're not going to stick to the rules that I'm giving you or anybody else will. And you will not succeed. You'll fall victim to this environment right here. This climate right here, this is that moment where an alcoholic feels like they want to escape. They want to escape their marriage. They feel like they're in a rut. They want to leave the person they're with. They don't like their job. They don't like where they're at in life. They they maybe lost their relationship and they can't get it back. All those things start wearing them, wearing them down emotionally and psychologically. And what do they do? They want to drink it away. They want to self-medicate. Well, in trading, how do we do that? We push the button. Bottoms up. Glasses up, baby. Push the button. Here's a toast to you, ICT. Listen, I don't want you to send me your trade win right now. I don't want you to do that because I don't believe it's an environment that is conducive for high probability. And to give you a high five right now would be equivalent to saying, hey, um, let me fill your gas tank up before you, you go home driving drunk. If you're impulsively looking to do something right now and you just can't wait to do it, you're addicted. And you're trying to do something that's outside of what I taught. And if you have something bad happen, you eat it. You own it. It's yours. You drove drunk. You're looking at this. You can't, you can't weather the time that's required to wait. Your impatience is, is wearing on you and you can't stand the way the market's moving and you just simply want to get out of it. And the only way you think you can get out of it is by simply pushing the button and then see what happens. And that's gambling. That's another form of addiction. So if you've never read the book, Trading for a Living, by Alexander Elder, uh, my advice is to read the, read the whole book, but the things about the indicators and stuff, throw that out. And it's, all, it's all BS. You don't need any of that. Um, the view of three time frames, that's wonderful. And that was my initial um, introduction to multiple time frame analysis. But I don't just do three time frames. I'm, I'm looking at other things. But the the real gem in that book is all the boring stuff in the beginning. And if you read it and try to place yourself inside of that, how do you fit in all of that? You as a person, you as a trader. And what can you do to avoid those things that would do you harm by not using the logic that's being introduced in that discussion, in that portion of the book. I've maintained that ever since I've ever asked by other people, what trading books do you like? None of them. No trading book out there was a complete 100% slam dunk. It's wonderful. I like Street Smarts because it provided short little patterns right to the point, things to go in and study price action with. But I don't trade with any of it. I made money with the anti-pattern that's in that book. Um, I made money with uh, my my version of turtle soup, but I, I I didn't like the whole rules of twenty day high and twenty day low because I could see that you know forming on a five minute chart. So I'm not using twenty days, you know, I'm not using turtle soup plus one, which is you know twenty one days high and low. Well, I'm not trying to teach your patterns, but uh, you know, street smarts books pattern or patterns rather. Um, were, were helpful for me to create a model that's right to the point. And that sounds like an oxymoron with me. Like, you're never right to the point, ICT. <laughs> you, you, never just, you never just spell it out. Well, I did in 2022. I gave you a very specific model that's easy to follow if you wait for those conditions. But the problem is, you don't have the discipline to wait. And doing things in an environment like this, it's uncomfortable, isn't it? Waiting like this is uncomfortable. Waiting like this and not having me tweak to you. For some of you, is unbearable. 
And what are you going to do to occupy your time? The same thing an alcoholic does. Grabs a bottle, tosses one back. What have you done since you've been doing that? Have you, have you grown? Did you profit? Did you feel good about what you did even if you did win? And can you really honestly say that that was skill? See how many problems manifest themselves in this environment for someone that is irresponsible, not disciplined, not rule-based. It invites chaos. It invites it. It greets it with a kiss. You don't want that in your trading. You do not want that. You want boring, easy salad day trading where it just simply wants to get right where you think it's going to go. And it's going to do so with multiple entry points, which is the reason why I said high probability trading with low resistance liquidity run. That is easy to trade and entry points are not even all that important because there's multiple ways to get in. You don't have to have the best entry, but right now, right now, you have to be perfect. Are you perfect? I'm not perfect. I know my limitations. And I know as a mentor teaching the rules I've given you, I am not going to be able to fire on all cylinders every single day, perfectly you know, leaving the day with my head up, thinking I've done them well. I did them right today, guiding them where I wanted to take your attention to in price action, and the outcome was favorable. I don't have that right now. So I'm trying to be responsible as your educator, your mentor, the captain at the helm, if you will. I'm trying to steer us around troubled waters. And some of you are arguing that you want to get wet. I want to feel the lightning on my backside. Just to see what it feels like. Drive us through it, ICT. I don't want to do that. I want you to respect the fact that you didn't have to go through the troubles that many people feel like they want to have to understand not to do it. Like You don't need to have your arm ripped off. You don't need to blow your account. You don't need to lose your funded account. You don't need to fail your funded account challenges to appreciate that this is a hard market right now. You should be thanking yourself, hey, look, I had the discipline to do nothing. And now, for some of you that were questioning whether you should have been doing that, you should feel better about it now. I physically had to remove myself from this because I would trade it. I would try to exert my ego on it. Why? Because I have people watching me. So I did the math on it. I said, well, you know, I know my characteristics. I know my tendencies. I'm impulsive. I'm obsessively compulsive. I'm bipolar. I have everything that would be perfect, perfect things to steer me right into the eye of the storm in this environment right now. So, being what I've wrote down in my journals for years, prayed about discipline, prayed about strength to, to walk away from it, this is like my drink for an alcoholic. Like, I want to be in this environment every day with you and sharing a drink with you at the pub. I want that. I enjoy it. I enjoy our time together. I enjoy sharing. But I can't do that right now. I have to take a step back. And I want you to appreciate the fact that I'm being responsible, not only with myself, but for you as my viewers. Like, I don't want you to fall victim to anything that's harmful. I'm not interested in the glitz and fame. If I was, I'd still be doing it past November this year. I won't be doing it. I want to instill in you the right mindset. I want to walk the talk. And I want to show you everything that you're supposed to be doing. Even if it's avoiding certain market environments. That's what mentoring is. And I, that's why I've asked you all, you know, whether you had the same faith as me or not, you know, to pray for me. Because I don't want to be a catalyst to cause any of you to, to fall short of your, your goals or your success. And also, I don't want you to foolishly try to attribute your failure to me. Because whatever you're doing, that result is yours. Whether it's good or bad, you own that. That's your, respo your, your responsibility. So I'm doing everything I can you know, within 
the realm of reality. I can't, I can't do anything more than I'm doing now. I'm physically removing any enticement. No tweets. Nothing. I can't be accused of, oh, you talked about this and I took this as that. No. That's why I physically had to take myself away from it. And that's where we're at. So I'm looking at a lovely day here in Florida. And I'm going to start working my way up north over the next couple of days. And then I think I'll stay in uh, Georgia probably on Saturday. And then probably, you know, after that, I'll start heading back up to uh, Maryland. But I just want to stop in and spend a couple minutes with y'all. Uh, I, I ended up giving you more than I said I would, didn't I? Always over deliver. <laughs> but hopefully you've been uh, doing well. And I miss you as much as you probably miss me. And I can't wait to get back into our discussions over price action again. Hopefully, you know, the rest of this week going into next week, we'll sort out the stagnant price action that we're seeing right now. If not, that's okay. I'll just go into just teachings and we won't do any live until it starts loosening up. But either way, uh, we'll be uh, back in the charts next Monday. So until I talk to you next time, be safe. <laughs>